What's up guys, welcome to today's video. So guess what, on the channel today, we're gonna focus on the brand new Maisie Williams haircut. Yes, Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. Not today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down this haircut. It's a chin length or jawline, uh, one length bob. It's also kind of choppy and it's got a choppy fringe, which is one of my favorite parts about it. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is I like to go on Instagram and really see the latest version of this haircut. So when I got to her Instagram, I looked at the very first post, it had multiple angles of this haircut. So it was very helpful. Um, the first thing that I wanna talk to you guys about is what a blunt bob is really all about. People see the choppy blunt bob and they think I wanna cut it choppy so then it styles that way. That's not what it's about. A lot of times a style is about cutting it precise and then how you go about styling it with your hot tools or your products, that's what's gonna make it look choppy. So you don't wanna chop it up around the perimeter because then when you iron it out, it's gonna look too choppy, it won't look modern. The modern feel to these blunt bobs is really a really precise haircut and then it's styled and when you straighten it out, it becomes different than the way that you cut it, which creates a choppiness, but you still see that precise line. So it doesn't break it up too much. That's one of the things that I like most about this haircut and the thing that I wanted to share with you guys the most as well. The second thing is the fringe in this haircut, you can see in multiple different ways how it's broken up, it's choppy, it's nice and skinny. Now, uh, it looks like she has pretty medium maybe even really low density hair. It doesn't look like she has thick hair. I've never felt her hair, so I don't really know. But if I had to look at these pictures, her bangs look pretty skinny. So um, this is a little bit easier cut to do on that type of hair. What I'm gonna show you guys today is more of a medium to coarse uh, thick thickness of hair. So we're gonna do a technique at the end when I cut the fringe where I elevate it a little bit, we cut it wet, and then we go in and cut it dry to remove some of that density and chop it up. I would say more people have challenges creating this fringe on medium to thick hair than they do on skinnier hair. So uh, that's how we're gonna do it today. So those are my favorite things about this cut. You can use this haircut in multiple different ways. You don't have to do it exactly the way that it is here. If you are not a hairdresser and you're watching this video for inspiration, I would encourage you to go to stylislocator.com. That is a website that we are launching. It's all about connecting good stylists, talented stylists with customers like you that watch these videos. So go check out stylislocator.com. And if you're a hairdresser and you're interested in that and being a part of that website, go to stylislocator.com as well. Let's get into the fun part, which is the tutorial. Here we go. All right, guys, so let's get into the sectioning first. Sectioning is pretty simple, straight down center back, back to the crown. And then what I wanna do is I wanna figure out that fringe area. So I go about two inches, find where that curve happens, uh, in the bang area and I draw a triangle uh, from one point down to about the edge of the eyebrow or where that hairline starts to drop off a little bit. And I do the same thing on the opposite side and that creates that triangle section that I'm gonna save to the end and uh, cut the fringe in that area. So it's just important that you don't section too far over on the fringe because then you're gonna end up getting into the sideburn area and you never wanna create sideburns on your client. So. Now I'm gonna go straight down center back, comb everything over, and then I'm gonna work occipital bone over to behind the ear. It's gonna be a slight diagonal forward, but pretty much horizontal line from the occipital bone over. All right, you're gonna notice that I comb multiple times to get that hair nice and tight from scalp to ends. Not just kind of combing it up, putting it in a butterfly clip, bunching it all together, having loose hairs flying everywhere. That's not the professional way to work. I comb everything over nice and clean. And then also notice that the way the grain of the hair is going, the way that I've got that hair flowing, every section I take is gonna be in that direction. So it makes everything quicker and easier and cleaner to work. So cutting everything one length from occipital bone down, just combing with comb tension. Notice I'm using the wide teeth of the comb. I'm not pushing the comb to the back of the head. I don't wanna create any tension when cutting a one length bob because the more tension you pull, that's not where the hair's naturally gonna live. And as soon as you let it go or blow it dry, it springs up, goes everywhere, and you don't get a clean result. So make sure that everything is with li as little tension as possible. If you don't even have to use a comb like right here, I'm not even using a comb because the hair is falling the way I want it to. If I need to control it a little bit, then I hold it with the wide teeth of the comb, just subtly, uh, but again, don't pull the hair from where it wants to live. So notice I keep continually moving in that horizontal, slight diagonal forward uh, way, 
and I'm following now that line, which is in line with the chin or the jaw line, right? So look at the jaw line and look at the part line. So notice that those mimic each other. I want the haircut to flow with the jaw line. So as I'm cutting, I'm looking up and I'm looking at that parting as a reference point to make sure that I get the cut that I'm looking for. These are more advanced ways of thinking. Like every time you do a haircut, you gotta break things down even more. Like how am I parting the hair? How clean am I taking my sections? Um, what's the angle of my scissor? What's the tension I'm putting on the hair? These are all things you have to think about to take yourself to the next level when you're cutting hair. Um, so could you just pull it down and cut it? Could you do that angle without parting it in that angle? Yes, you can do all that stuff, but it's so important to just keep everything clean while you're working um, so that you get a better result every single time you cut somebody's hair. All right, and then I'll finish up my final, um, kind of bringing down that final section and just cutting everything. Once, a lot of your clients have layers in their hair, so it gets a little bit less dense in the top. So as I bring that down, it took a little bit thicker of a section, but still just following the line that I've created uh, from the underneath. So now I just repeat it on the left side. Everything stays the same, guys. Uh, and now we're gonna go in and cut the fringe. Now this is really fun because this is a shattered fringe. I wanted to show you guys how to create this. My initial thought is I wanna figure out the around what length I wanna take. So I take a little piece out and I carve into that little piece. I section everything else away, carve into that little piece to get the length that I want as a guideline. So now I can take down the rest of that section. I'm gonna pull it over top of the nose. Uh, angle my fingers at about a 45 degree angle and then I point cut in to give it that shattered effect. So what I'm really doing right now is removing length. Uh, that's the key. And I'm gonna go a little bit shorter in the dry portion of the cut, but I wanna remove the length, remove some of the density so it makes it easier for me when I go in with that dry cut. So notice I overdirect everything to that center point. It's really three sections. I cut the middle and then I pull each side over to the center and you get that curved effect in the fringe. Now that fringe is a little bit longer than what I want in the end result. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna style it now. I'm gonna use Paul Mitchell um, Quick Slip, one of my favorite products, very light hold, keeps the hair nice and flexible, but nice and smooth and shiny as well. It also speeds up your blow dry time, which is always a benefit in your home or in the salon. So I work the fringe back and forth. I do a flat wrap technique. My goal with this is to make sure that I'm just wrapping the hair around the head, which you'll see as I, I blow dry that and as it starts to dry, notice the curve of the hair that starts to happen naturally. Now it curves around the face, gives it a more natural feel, a natural lie. So when I go in and do my dry cutting, that's when I'll see the benefit of that because it's already gonna have that nice natural fall to it. So just working both sides back and forth, same thing in the back, go one way, back the other way. That cowlick area in the top of the crown, I wanna do the same thing there. I'm not trying to blow dry that up and unnatural. I wanna keep everything in its natural fall in the cut. Now I go in Paul Mitchell flexible style, hot off the press. Uh, definitely uh, top 10 product on my list. I uh, love it, heat protectant, has a little bit of hold, which is always nice, but it's not extreme. So I go in 80% dry the hair, spray hot off the press, then I go in, finish it 100% dry, and then I go in with my smoothing iron uh, and finish it that way. Now, notice I didn't grab my scissor to do this technique. I could, I could use the tip of the scissor and work my way around. In the salon, sometimes I like to just grab a clipper because it's a lot faster. Um, I get this very similar result, pretty much the same result sometimes even better result using the clipper. And I go through and I just define that line on the outer perimeter. Now we go in with the fringe. I'm gonna do slide cutting to remove length and density and start to create that choppy fringe. So the reason I took a lot of that length off and all of that at the beginning in the wet cut was just so I could have the ease of just sliding through here and really etching in that style that I want. So I just, Pinching the hair, sliding and cutting. Half closing the scissor, sliding down the hair shaft, and there you go. That's what we're trying to do. Now I'm gonna lift the hair up and I'll point cut a little deeper into it. That slide cutting takes some of the density out and then the point cutting is really gonna chop off those ends and make the bang just a little bit shorter. That's what I wanted it to be. There we 
go. Got a little choppiness to it. It's almost the way I want it. And now a little tease cutting. Those of you guys who watch my videos for a long time, you know I love this technique. Just wanted to remove a little density from the sides of the hair, add a little bit of layering, but invisible layers, uh, just to soften everything. Uh, this is definitely a textured look, so it doesn't need to be so precise on the sides. And now I'm gonna finish it with Paul Mitchell, hold me tight, a uh, nice firm hold hairspray. And then I really wanted to bring this into a little bit more of a modern style. So this wraps a little bit too much around her face. So I'm gonna go in and do a little bit more of a technique in there. But I'll get a little, little bit of the hot off the press on there. And now I take my smoothing iron. This is the Paul Mitchell uh, Express Ion style. And I just tweak it out just a little bit. So I put it in the iron and I twist out instead of around the face. That's gonna give me a more modern choppy feel to the style. So this is one of my favorite things to do at this point, especially with a blunt bob, is just to create. You can see how choppy it looks. Uh, that to me makes it a little bit more modern. Now I go in, this is actually a barbering product, but it's always good on a bob too. What's good in barbering is good on a bob. Uh, I go through, it's a dry paste, and I just add a little bit of separation, a little bit of shine, uh, kind of clump together some of that fringe area. Just gives it a, more texture and a fun look. So, hope you guys liked this video. I definitely loved making this video for you. If you have any cutting or coloring requests, uh, post those in the comments. Like always, if you like this video, then make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with all of your friends out there. And if you're looking for a stylist, a talented stylist, go to stylislocator.com. That is our website that we are building to connect hairstylists with customers and customers with hairstylists to get the best results possible. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this community. Can't wait to share more videos with you guys. Thanks for watching.